Hi and most welcome to uh, Seat World. Today uh, Jonas and I will do a short presentation of us at uh, Seat World and the latest updates and also a few words about uh, the market movements. All right. It is a 10 year university as well. It is. So, uh, all right. Um, our vision is to become the world leading supplier for offshore wind farms. And we will say a few words about why that's uh, a clear focus for us. But first, a few, few words about our uh, history. We have a 10 year anniversary this week. And it started with the innovator, uh, Daniel Arnberg, who was out rowing and actually looked at the swirl from an oar in the boat. And that indicated that it was very low friction because the swirl continued for a long time. And that was uh, the start of SeaWorld as a company. 2015, we installed uh, the S1 outside Lysershield and uh, it's been operating since then. Uh, 2016, we listed on the first North uh, Nasdaq. Uh, 2017, we uh, received some soft funding from Vinova. And 2019, we actually received 2.5 million euro from EU, which made a big difference for the company. And that's when they intensified the work for our current unit that we are working with, which is the uh, S2. And it's a one megawatt unit and Jonas and uh, the team are working hard with that and he will update the latest uh, progress in that project. Um, 2021 we actually sat down and had a really intensified uh, strategy work where it became clear that we need to focus on the wind farms and I will, as I said, say a few words about that. And we also during this year, past year, finalized and verified that our technical solution uh, is working. We, by calculations, simulations and tank tests, and Jonas will say a few words about that coming up. So the conclusion is that our technology works. All right, when it comes to strategy, uh, why did we focus on the wind farms? And what's the reason for, for that clear focus? Well, um, the, one of the main reasons is that the wind farms are larger, that's a larger volume, but also they are making a huge difference in the world we live in, which is important for all of, all of us working at SeaTrol. But it's also a very structured process, meaning that there is a nation that uh, identifies certain areas which are a good location for wind farms. There is uh, the, uh, the process of who's going to work with the, uh, the wind farms, uh, who's the supplier and so on. It's easy, easier to work with and it's more identifiable. Um, and for us, when it comes to, a, to, to approach the wind farms, we obviously have a few focus areas. And first and most is the team that we work with, um, but also having communication with potential customers having uh, the best partners around for the areas where we are not uh, the experts. Um, we want to stay close to the latest research from universities and others. Um, also looking into our investors and, uh, and who would be the best partner investor for us going forward. Um, the lead suppliers for simulation and design tools is something that Jonas and the team are constantly working and uh, um, looking into. And then of course soft funding where we have a new partner and uh, we have a re great collaboration and, and uh, we are very positive for the future. But most of all we want to build an attractive product and that's uh, what this update is about. Just a few words about the market. Um, the market for floating offshore is exploding and I think uh, most of you have uh, read about it, heard about it and uh, it's, uh, it's of course very inspiring for us at SeaWorld. Um, many, many nations have publicly announced their tough intentions. So it's very exciting times. Uh, the Noske Viritas report that came out just a week ago, they were talking about that 2050 
50% of the renewable of the energy will come from re renewable sources and 30% of that will be wind. So uh, it's a huge expanding market. A few examples of uh, procurements that are ongoing and large. One of them is the UK's Scott Wind. Now we're talking about 25 gigawatt is the ambition. And uh, applying for that was 74 ap applicants and it was 14 that won the 17 different uh, sites. Um, of the 17 sites, 11 of them are floating. And we are talking about an area of 7,000 square kilometers of uh, wind uh, farms. So exciting times, of course. And US, with the Biden administration, both for the east and the west coast, they have currently only seven turbines uh, operating on the east coast and uh, Rhode Island and Virginia coast. And now they're looking at uh, Long Island, Virginia coast, Cape Cod, North Carolina, South Carolina, California, and outside New York. So, of course, we stay close to that market as well. And uh, last but not least, uh, Sweden announced uh, clear and increased ambitions uh, just uh, the few last weeks. So now they want to search, identify uh, suitable areas for offshore wind in Sweden, which of course, uh, you know, is a, a great joy for us at Sitwell. Well, I hand over to you, Jonas, to say a bit, what have we been doing since September when I think we had the last update? So uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. It's, uh, it's interesting to hear about the market and it's a lot of things going on there. Sweden is a little bit late on the agenda, I would say, but it's good that they're catching up. Okay, so what have we been doing? Well, we've been continuously refining the design. We focused on S2 and uh, basically turned the boat around in September where we did get a new strategy. We are focusing on growing, we're focusing on larger turbines. So it became more important for us to look at the design of S2 and see how we're scaling this. This has always been a focus point for us, but now even so, we had a couple of um, three months where we could catch our breath. We could see if we could look into something in particular, and we did. We have developed tools to refine the structure, not the, not the least the, um, the turbine. We are unique since we are rotating the full structure. So this is very important for us. And we see potential here. Um, the tool that we developed is something that we're gonna bring with us when we're now going into having even larger turbines. We've already been looking into SX uh, and um, we are prepared for this. And in the picture you see behind me a couple of iterations in different models uh, that we generated with this tool only for the turbine itself. So I would say that um, uh, it's. I would like to add as well. We very much like to look in deeper into these models to put them into S2. But given the tight uh, time schedule that we have to actually launch S2, which I'm coming back to uh, later on, uh, we have decided to stay with pretty much the same configurations that we already have. Uh, we have been doing exciting things. Uh, November was a big month for us. We uh, did put something in the water at least. We put our scale model into a tank. Uh, we tested it out. We did focus on the most critical areas uh, that we have been conservative when we're doing our simulations. So what we're getting now is a confirmation that these assumptions that we have made are conservative. And that was a relief, not only for me, my team, but also for uh, Peter who's selling this up. So uh, maybe the least exciting test is a decay test. Basically what you do is just you lift up the structure and then you drop it and you're measuring how this is moving up and down into the water. What we can do there is decipher the eigenperiod in heave for this structure, which is quite important because if you have long swells, you don't want to excite us. We were well above 
where we thought we were, oh, 5, 10, 20%, so I mean, well above in this sense. But this makes a very, we are more comfortable going forward and we can uh, fine tune the simulations. We're going to see, we see low loads, so that's very good news. Uh, we also investigated the Magnus effect. It's the effect of you having a rotating or spinning structure in a fluid. In our case, we have water, we have current hitting the uh, floater, and this creates a perpendicular force on this structure. We investigated this in a uniform current by dragging our model uh, in a rather stiff carriage. You can see it in the presentation here uh, on the far that will be left. Uh, and we did this with waves as well, doing the same thing. Uh, what you can see in the graph is that the blue dots indicate what we have assumed previously and the red dots are the test results. You can, it's a big relief when we see all the red dots are below the blue dots, which means again that we've been conservative, not much conservative, but we still have a conservative approach. So it means that we have a good design, which we have even strong effect. So I think with that, I'm gonna turn the word over to you again. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas. Um, a few words about uh, the the focus on wind farms. I mentioned before that uh, we have strong commitments from uh, many governments and it's nice to see that Europe is really staying ahead, trying to take a lead in this. And um, as I mentioned before, the process are very much structured. So it's easier for us to understand, easier to, to, to work with. So that's really uh, good news. And as I mentioned before, we want to make a difference. And by making a difference, you need to have bigger volume out, out there in the water. Um, but also, uh, a few words that Jonas will come, into as, uh, come back to as well, is that we are scaling up our structures. Why do you scale up? Well, we want to produce very attractive uh, energy with a low cost. And by doing that, you need to scale up because the ratio between energy output and cost scales really well. So we will say a few words about our plans going forward, but uh, we are looking into units uh, with a size of 10 to 15 megawatts as uh, future projects. And um, another word is that the last quarter and a half, the interest from the market concerning our products and our solution has increased a lot. So we have gladly had a lot of interactions and communications with different markets and we will see what that takes us, but it's a good feeling. A little bit about the roadmap. As we mentioned, we put the S1 outside Lucy Shield in the water 2015. We are aiming for our one megawatt S2X to be installed in 2023. But we now are looking at the 10 megawatt to be uh, ready somewhere to 25. And then obviously we look at larger units like 15 megawatts and larger for 227. And of course, uh, that's a lot of work to be done, but it's also exciting times. So it's a lot of fun. And uh, I think uh, we have a good, we, I know we have a good view of how to do it. And I, now I hand it over to you again. So a little bit more about what have you been doing since uh, September? Again, other things. I know that you've been busy. We've been busy and uh, it's been good that we've been busy. Uh, the preparation that we've done so far has put us in a very good spot. We were prepared to go to manufacturing already in September last year. And now we are in a position where we're going to start up or we have already started up. You can see it. we started to produce the blades already. And this is something that we're going to continue. We're going to have a much nicer pace, much con more controlled pace uh, this year. And we are basically just slimming the design, uh, trying to get shave off those extra weights, focusing on the top part of the um, structure where we can save, if we can save much weight on the top part, it's much like a sailboat. Huh? So that's what we are focusing on now, getting a good, comp 
completion, uh, getting the structure completed, all the drawings in place, have good uh, quotations for the um, steel part, which we're going to start producing later on this year. Mm. Uh, we did do this uh, a round of this um, last year. We have good collaborations with those uh, potential suppliers. So we have much more information this year and we have learned a lot during the year. Uh, going into the manufacturing phase, it's going to be a quite hectic period as well for us. And juggling this together with uh, developing S2 is going to be very interesting. Mm. But we're going to take the experience that we have now. Did you mean uh, developing SX, the larger unit, at the same time? Mm. Yes. Okay. Did I say S2? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> But S2 is already developed, mm. so going into X, S, SX is um, of course challenging while you're manufacturing. But we're going to learn during this manufacturing and we can implement that in the development of SX as well. So I think that uh, it's going to be interesting, exciting and it's going to be stressful, of course. But we are a dedicated team that are focused on the um, assignments. Mm. Uh, what we already have in our hands is the electrical components mm. and that's a good feeling because the the world right now is going wild uh, ordering electrical components can be very hard and uh, having that on storage and be able to uh, install all the uh, softwares it's it's a very good feeling actually uh, so this is what's going to be our focus and um, then the steel production is going to start in the, in the autumn mm. uh, cool going to install Next year. Yeah. It's exciting. Thank you. Um, a few final words. Uh, thank you, Mas. Um We were talking about uh, having an attractive product, which obviously is the main, uh, main key for us. And by having an attractive product, there is many components, but obviously uh, producing low cost, uh, very attractive energy uh, is the main, the main focus for us. And Having a design that was built for offshore from the start, being out there uh, in the ocean where there is plenty of wind, uh, lots of energy, being out of your backyard, uh, meaning that we can place them where it doesn't uh, affect or disturb uh, people. We have um, a possibility of stabilizing uh, the grid network uh, with our current solution. And we are scaling really well. Our technology is scaling, so meaning that we can be larger, uh, better than many other technologies. And uh, we can be very efficient in wind farms. So that means that we can place more units in a smaller area, which is uh, very attractive for the future. So uh, thank you so much, Jonas, for thank saying you. a few words. <laughs> And thank you for listening. Uh, great and uh, hope to see you soon again.